Hello Retro Gamers! Lately I've been amazed at how many people use the GB300, although I probably shouldn't be surprised since it's a device that emulates quite a few systems and allows safe states, all at a very low price. Practically just a few dollars more than those 4 or 500 in 1 consoles that are weaker in every way. And due to the popularity of the GB300, I've decided to revisit it with some tutorials. Currently there are two versions of the GB300 on the market, simply named V1 and V2. So today we're discussing the upgrade from the first version of the GB300 to the second version. From a hardware perspective nothing changes, practically when we talk about V1 or V2 the difference is only in the software. Since it's only about the software it means we can easily switch between versions, or we can even have two cards if we want access to both. But before doing the upgrade maybe we should understand, at least somehow, what version 2 is all about. Version 2 is basically a combination of the GB300 V1 firmware and the SF2000 firmware, which continues to give us access to the PC Engine games while also giving us access to main games. For today's operation I recommend a card with a capacity of 16 or 32 gigs. With a smaller card we won't have room for all the games, and uh, with a larger one there will be a lot of free space left, plus there's also the possibility that the device won't recognize it. I'll use this 32 gigs Kingston because that's what I have on hand. If you don't want to use a separate card for the V2, I recommend backing up the current card's content to avoid losing data if something goes wrong. Instruction for how to do this can be found in a dedicated video on our channel, even though the video is for the SF2000, the step will be exactly the same. As with the SF2000, before making any changes to the card's file structure, I strongly recommend applying the boot fix. Instructions for how to do this somewhat manually can also be found on our channel, in a dedicated video for the SF2000, but the process is the same. As usual, all the links used in the video will be available in the description. If for the SF2000 I showed how we can apply the boot fix manually, in today's video we'll talk about how we can do this using the GB300 V1 tool, because at least for now the console card still has version 1 of the software. For this, we will first download the tool, after downloading we unzip it, then launch it, Provide the path to our microSD that we previously inserted in the card reader and then click patch bootloader on next boot, which creates a new folder on the card with a file that contains our update. Then we put the card back in the device and the fix will apply automatically on the first boot. If uh, for various reasons you no longer have the card with V1 or it no longer boots, after we download and upgrade to V2 we'll show you how we can also do this with the GB300 V2 tool. But coming back to the upgrade to V2, this upgrade can be done in several ways. Today we'll use a method we found to be quick, fairly simple and somewhat guaranteed to work. So we'll download an archive prepared beforehand by another retro enthusiast, which we will download from here. And as usual we can download the archive directly, which will take a bit longer, or we can use the torrent file. Whichever method is chosen, while the file is downloading, let's prepare the card for the new software. For this, we insert the new SD into the PC, right click on it from the explorer and format it, making sure to choose FAT32. If the microSD used is larger than 32 gigs, Windows won't let you format directly to FAT32. There are alternatives for that, but they are outside our scope today. After the download is complete, we need to unzip the file. The resulted files will then be copied to the freshly formatted FAT32 card. Some attention is needed here to make sure the content of the folder goes onto the card and not the folder itself. In the end, our card structure should look like this. As we can see, we already have the folder for bootfix here. The bad news is that if the bootfix is not already applied to our device, the console will not boot with this image, even if the bootfix is there. So now we will use the tool for GB300 V2 and SF2000, because this card already has V2. Thus, we run the tool for V2 using the assigned letter of our card, and then we check the option to create a dummy file which will create an empty one in the BIOS folder. Now, after inserting the card into the console, it will start and the boot fix will be applied, if it wasn't already there. 
After playing, the device will start directly into the new menu and now we will have main in addition to the existing categories in V1. Before concluding, we will also start a few games from the new arcade system. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write us. In the following videos, we will also present a method to install multicore on the DB300 for those who want to do this. That's all from us, until next time, we wish you the usual happy retro gaming.